Today we have this really cool integral you can show your friends at the next cult meeting. And I'm pretty sure it's completely normal for everyone to join one of those, right? Perfectly normal. Anyway, we have the integral from 0 to infinity of x to the s dx divided by the hyperbolic cosine or cosh of x minus 1. And the s parameter here is a complex number with real part greater than 1. Okay, cool. So how exactly do we approach this integral? Well, we have the hyperbolic cosine in the denominator. So we could expand it using the definition by recalling that the hyperbolic cosine or cosh of x equals e to the x plus e to the negative x by 2. And this means that i can be written as the integral from 0 to infinity of x to the s dx divided by e to the x plus e to the negative x by 2 minus 1. And we can expand by a factor of 2 and get twice the integral from 0 to infinity of x to the s dx divided by e to the x plus e to the negative x minus 2. And a look at the denominator of the integrand motivates us to apply a completing square approach. So we should factor out an e to the x term, and that would give me i equal to twice the integral from 0 to infinity of x to the s dx divided by e to the x and what we have left is 1 plus e to the negative 2x minus 2 times e to the negative x. Okay, cool. So all of this means that i equals twice the integral from 0 to infinity of x to the s times e to the negative x dx divided by 1 plus e to the negative 2x, terribly sorry about that, minus 2 times e to the negative x. Okay, cool. And now the denominator is the square of 1 minus e to the negative x. So this means that i is twice the integral from 0 to infinity of x to the s times e to the negative x dx divided by 1 minus e to the negative x squared. We now have a convergent geometric series arrangement so first recall that the reciprocal of 1 minus x can be expanded as the sum over the non-negative integers k of x to the k provided that the absolute value of x is less than 1. And in this case, we have e to the negative x, which is clearly less than 1 on our interval of integration, which means that we can expand the reciprocal of 1 minus e to the negative x as the sum over k of e to the negative k times x. But I need the square of 1 minus e to the negative x in the denominator. And we can fix that by differentiating with respect to x, because that gives me, by the power rule, 1 minus e to the negative x squared in the denominator, a negative 1 because of the power rule, but because of the chain rule, I have a negative sign and another negative sign because of the e to the negative x term when we differentiate it. So finally, I have e to the negative x with a negative sign upstairs, and on the right-hand side, we have the sum over k of negative k times e to the negative k times x. So the two negative signs cancel out, and this means that e to the negative x divided by 1 minus e to the negative x squared equals the sum. Now, we can start our sum at k equal to 1 because k equal to 0 just gives us a 0. So we now have the sum over the positive in integers k of k times e to the negative kx. So we now have a cool series expansion we can apply directly to our integral because we have twice the integral from 0 to infinity of x to the s times e to the negative x divided by 1 minus e to the negative x squared and this thing can be expressed as this infinite series, which implies that i equals twice the integral from 0 to infinity of x to the s times the sum over k of k times e to the negative kx, integration with respect to x. And because this x term is independent of the index variable k, we can slip it inside the summation operator, 
and this means that i equals twice the integral from zero to infinity of the sum over k of k times e to the negative kx times x to the s dx. We can switch up the order of integration and summation operators and write this as twice the sum over the positive integers k of the integrals from zero to infinity of k times e to the negative kx times x to the s dx. And the k term here is independent of x, so we can slip it outside the integration operator. Okay, so far so good. And to deal with the integral we have left after all of those nice tricks, we're gonna apply a substitution. So we let k times x equal u which implies that dx equals du by k, and we have i equal to twice the sum over k of k times the integral from zero to infinity. x to the s turns into u to the s by k to the s, and we have e to the negative u. dx transforms into du by k, and the k terms cancel out quite nicely, meaning that we have i equal to twice the integral twice the sum over k, that is. The integral is, is a sum too, but that's a continuous sum, so yeah, this is the discrete sum over k of one by k to the s times the integral from zero to infinity of u to the s times e to the negative u du. And we recognize the integral as our good old friend, the gamma function evaluated at s plus one here. So this means that i equals twice the gamma function at s plus one times the sum over k of one by k to the s. And we recognize the sum part here as the wonderful Riemann zeta function evaluated at s. So finally, we have this really cool integration result that one half the integral from zero to infinity of x to the s dx divided by cosh x minus one equals, wait, let me just move this down here. So the integral sorts out to gamma s plus one times zeta s, which is just gorgeous. It's a beautiful result connecting the gamma and zeta functions. And there are lots of interesting results here because, well, gamma and zeta functions involved. But a really nice one or a really interesting one would be the case of s equal to four. So for that, we have one half the integral from zero to infinity of x to the fourth power dx divided by cosh x minus one. And in this case, the integrand is an even function of x. So that means we could write this as one half the integral from negative to positive infinity, that means we have a quarter outside, and this equals gamma five times zeta four. And zeta four is pi to the fourth power by 90, if I remember correctly. And gamma five is four factorial, which sorts out to 24. So let me see if I remember my multiplication tables right. I think we have an 8 here, and a 30 here, and then a 4 here, then a 15 here. Okay, great. So that's 4 by 15, a quarter on the right. This implies that the integral from negative to positive infinity of x to the s dx divided by cosh x minus 1 equals 16 times pi to the fourth power by 15, which is quite interesting. I hope you enjoyed the video. Be sure to like and subscribe. Thank you. See you next.